Hey everybody, welcome to this tips and tricks video. It has been a while. Um, this is actually inspired by something that came up recently with a customer. So I thought I'd make a video on it um, because I figured, you know, other people may run into similar issues and find this helpful as well. Uh, and that topic is the diagnose and repair functions in Tecla. Uh, so if you're not aware, under the file menu, you have this option called Diagnose and Repair. And when you click on Diagnose and Repair, you're going to get a couple of options in here on what can be diagnosed and what can be repaired. So I'm going to go through them kind of briefly um, and try to explain uh, to the best of my understanding what each one of them do uh, and when I personally would use them and which ones I wouldn't really use. Um, so first off, starting at the top. Diagnosing the model. So honestly, I never even use the diagnose model option. I just go straight to repair. I don't see a point in diagnosing without fixing the actual issue. Um, so in the description, I'm going to post a link to the uh, Tecla user assistance that explains in more detail what this actually checks for. Um, but this is something that you can run fairly frequently. When you hit repair model, it's going to scan through the model. It's going to try to find problems, things with physical objects, um, things with components, um, you know, the way things are modeled. And this is something, you know, this is a fairly small model, but you can see I've got a handful of things that have been corrected. So objects too short, maybe you pick two points on top of each other, um, a UDA with the wrong type, uh, missing or invalid objects. So, you know, this is something that honestly, if it were me, I would be running a repair model about once a week. And that's just a personal preference. I think of running a repair model as like changing the oil in your car, right? It's, it's maintenance. It's something you do on a regular basis to ensure that things keep working well in the long run. So by doing regular repairs of the, the main model, um, say weekly, you can avoid long-term issues. So that's one that I use a lot and recommend people use a lot. Um, the second one under the Diagnose and Repair is the Library Database. So what the Library Database is actually checking is your custom components and sketched profiles. Now for the steel segment that uh, you know I'm working with, sketched profiles are not something we get into a lot, but custom components are. So by running this, it's doing the same sort of check, except for things that aren't necessarily being used in the model, but are available to this model, like the custom components. So if I run that, let's see if this model has any issues. Looks like we can see that some things were corrected with custom components that had been built. Now, sometimes these can't be corrected and you actually have to go into the custom component editor and fix those problems. It looks like all of these could be corrected, but that's essentially what this is checking is the custom components that may or may not even be used in this model right now. Um, so that's one that I don't run that often. I don't think it's necessary to run a library database repair as often as a model database repair, but it's still something that on occasion, especially if you've been making a lot of CCs, is maybe go through and just, you know, run that to make sure that everything is good. Now, the next one is what actually led to this, um, this video, and it was a call that I got from someone that they were having some issues with their numbering. Um, so if you ever run into a problem where things don't seem to be combining the way they should, um, when you, you're getting numbers that don't really make sense and you, you think that sh things should be happening differently, um, this diagnose and repair numbering all is something that can help correct those problems. And usually I would run this after running a repair model. Okay, so I wanna repair the physical model first, then we're gonna do a diagnose and repair numbering um, all. If, you're, if you've been around Tecla for a while, uh, this also used to be the equivalent of a full numbering. Okay, so kind of a, the same animal. So if I go ahead and hit diagnose and repair numbering all, uh, we can see that the numbering check has corrected 13 parts, zero rebars, probably because there aren't any in, of those in this model, and zero assembly number series. So this model here did have some issues with part marks that have now been corrected. Now if you said, well, that's great, but 
which parts, um, you always do have a log file for your numbering history. So if you go down here through your file menu and go to logs, this isn't really what I was trying to get at in this video, but it is worth knowing that in here you can go ahead and scan through the most recent changes as far as what's been happening uh, in the numbering uh, process, okay? Um, now, if I come in here and I go down to the diagnose and repair again, um, Honestly, I don't use the series of selected um, because if I were to run that, I have to like select a column to check all the columns. I just like to do all, but if you needed to be more specific, you know, you could check just the series. Um, now coming down here to these last two, Diagnose and change attribute definitions, that just means user-defined attributes, and honestly, that's kind of an advanced thing. The only time you should run into that is if you're opening models with different objects IMP files, um, and if you don't know what that is, don't even worry about it. Um, but that's usually something like if you're opening a model with different settings uh, where UDAs aren't matching up. So I don't use that a whole lot, that's kind of a rare one. However, find distant objects comes up all the time comes up all the time and it has for years. So let me give you a use case as to why you would want to run this find distant objects. If you've ever had a view where let's say you open up a new view or perhaps you do a fit work area to entire model and this happens the entire model disappears and you have no idea what's going on. Sometimes you can zoom in like down here I see a little speck that's actually my model and if I keep zooming in we can go find it again. Um, so that that sometimes will happen but you'll notice that like your work area will disappear. You're zoomed out so far that you can't see the work area and that's actually what's happening. You're zoomed out super super far. And essentially what's happened here is something has gotten thrown way off in space so far out that Tekla had to zoom out to see it and now you, you know, you're know you going to have trouble finding it. And you know you can do some things like double click in the background and try to increase your view depth. Uh, you can try to randomly window select and hope you get lucky. Um, but that's where that last option under the diagnose and repair for finding distant objects uh, can come in handy. So if you choose that option to find distant objects First thing you're going to do is you're going to get a list of IDs of the objects that, that are out there. And those could be you know construction lines, those could be points, those could be other random things. Um, so as you select these, it's actually selecting that object even though you can't see it. If I were to come in here and highlight that list, you can see that six objects are currently selected in the model. Now you could do something like right click and zoom to them or, or something like that. Um, you could also just simply right click and delete them, which is what I'm going to do in this case. Now also in the list you're seeing this min x, max x, that's just a list of the, ID, uh, the IDs of the extremes, like the furthest up, the furthest out, the furthest left, the furthest right kind of thing. Um, but if I come in here and I go ahead and delete those objects, when I right click and fit work up, uh, model again, it'll zoom back in, it'll fix that work area issue, and I'm back where I started. So if you ever find that where you, you create a new view or you do a, a work area all and it just you know blows up like that, that's most likely what the issue is, and that's one way you can help solve that problem. So anyway, we'll go ahead and wrap it up there. I hope you find this video helpful. Like I said, it's something that comes up from time to time, so I thought I'd make a video about it. Uh, feel free to leave some comments below if there's anything else that you're interested in seeing some tips about. Um, and as always, thanks for watching.